Hey guys, Editor Dalen here, and not till the end of the video, or me recording, I didn't see that my screen isn't fully being captured. So you guys can't see some of the top, and about a third of the left of the screen. In post, I'm going to make it so you can see the things you need to see by putting it up on screen, but I hope it doesn't ruin the tutorial that you can't see full on my screen. But thank you for watching this, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, I'm going to teach you something about squashing and stretching in MOHO. And I know I'm probably not certified to teach you anything because I haven't touched MOHO in five to six months. But anyways, I've been thinking about making this video for a very long time. Because I've seen this in multiple animations other people have made. Even bigger ones, bigger like animators I believe have made this mistake. I don't want to call it a mistake. But it, it's just something that, I guess, it kind of infuriates me. Probably only me, too. But, okay, so here's our guy we're going to be working with in this tutorial. Uh, I quickly drew him up about a year ago. And I sort of rigged him just to test things out. Oh, gosh. So here's our guy we're going to be working with in the tutorial. Let's just see what this guy can do. I made it so his horns kind of squash and stretch to make it look like he's playing. And his little body squashes and stretch. So right here, you guys can see what I have a problem with. When I squash and stretch, you see his horns don't go where they're supposed to be going if I just use the one bone squash and stretching. See, they stay in the same exact X position but move up and down the Y axis when we scale the, the bone. And that's why I think it's necessary to make a squash and stretch bone dial. And I'm going to teach you how to make one. I know you probably do because it's the squash and stretch bone dials or smart bones in general have been a thing for a while in the community. And I think almost everyone should know how to make them if your moho version allows you to make one. First, you want to make sure you're not selecting any bones. And then you want to go over here to the Add Bone or press A. And you want to hold Shift and start dragging up where you want your bone to be. Now, what it's good to have this. Go up here to Bone Constraints. And you want to do Angle Constraints. So it'll add these little funny little like borders or barriers for the, the bone itself. So how to make this a smart bone. So you want to first select the bone and you want to press control and K on your keyboard. It will pull up this little actions window. You want to press insert reference. And if the bone name shows up here, so look, B4 and B4 as in bone 4, that means you're doing it like all correct. So you want to press OK and you'll see your timeline should turn blue. If you haven't messed with all like the color settings in Moho itself, it should turn blue. So this timeline down here now is basically what happens when the bone is turned. Oh yeah, and make sure your interpolation is set to linear instead of smooth. Because sometimes if it's not set to linear, it can be choppy. Because you're basically putting a smooth action on top of another smooth action. Which can make it look very like weird sometimes. So what you want to do is go to two like I did and make it so the smart bone is turned all the way to the left or the right you just want to go to your first frame either one or zero make it go all the way to the opposite side you did on over here yeah, basically you have set up the controls for your bone this bone is basically scrubbing through the timeline and will do anything the frame says like whatever frame it's on when it's scrubbing through so this means if we go to our guy who has squash and stretch, and let's say we want to make him squash all the way up on, on the far left, and over here all the way down. And now, if we click main line here, Mofix taught me that one. And when you manipulate the bone, all the way left here stretches your little guy up, and then all the way to the right here stretches it down. And you can see we still have the problem with these guys not following the bone. But with this handy thing, now 
we can make it so you move it yourself and then go to the very end here and move it out so when you squash down your little your features should squash out or go out and when you stretch up your features should go in so now the horns the horns kind of follow which they it's what they should do when you're doing this and you see it's not perfectly following the exact same spot it should be but it, with a little tweaking and all that you can make it look absolutely perfect other things you can do with your smart bone especially if you're doing squash and stretch is making it so it doesn't you don't just go up and down so let's say you want to make it so when he stretches up he tilts back a little and he stretches down he tilts forward a little and now we'll go back to main line look he he you can barely see it but it's just like a little detail that can make your animations or rigs like pop and make it so it looks the best it can smart bones can also interact with your switch layers so let's say when he's squashing down you want his eyelid to to kind of close a bit Smart boats can also interact with switch layers. So let's say if you wanted your guy to squash down, he kind of like squints a little bit. Uh, I think you get my example, but it can also interact with that. So you see here, it it's doing what it's doing. You can also make it so like his, his mouth kind of, his mouth kind of opens a bit. Um... You don't even have to move bones around. You can move just actual like plain layers, as long it's in it's in the rig bone group. You can move layers. So we, let's say when he squashes up, you want him to be kind of looking up, but when he squashes down, he looks more down. You don't have to have a bone for the eye or the pupil. You just move the layer while you're editing their smart bone action. And look at that. It's like we we made it. It's basically, you make an animation set to the bone, and it the bone basically just scrubs through the frames of the animation. But the cool thing is, the animation the bone does, does not affect the animation you do out here in the main line. So I made this guy kind of just like tip himself over with like the main animation not the bone but when we do the smart bone and all that it'll still squash and stretch him it basically adds everything it needs to to your main animation without really affecting it it kind of affects it by adding how much angle he needs to be at then but it doesn't set it to the exact angle we set it to in the smart bone itself so he'll still kind of tip a bit more down when he goes down and then he'll spring back up spring back up and we'll make him rest at its normal position and yeah that's basically it for this tutorial it's mainly just i want to put the word out that it's so much better or as like dare i say necessary that you make a smart bone dial for squashing and stretching instead of just using the the main bone just to squash and stretch up and down by scaling it you should put the scaling into a smart bone dial it makes all of the difference in your animations with like just the smallest little details can come out of a smart bone dial and it's really the best thing that has ever come to the MSM animation community and I wanna say I wanna think Oh, I'm not going to say his name, but I'm calling him Roger. I'm going to thank Roger for it. Because I want to say, at least to me, he's the first one to ever introduce smart bones to the community. I remember when we first learned, or at least I first learned about target bones. So you can do like IK and all that to make it like the monster squat or your rig squat up and down. I remember when that was first introduced to me. And I thought it was like one of the best things because I remember I've made animations before Bones. And even with Bones, I didn't know about it. And it was painful trying to make it squat without IK. And 
I'm just so glad of how far we've come in, like, animation. I've seen 3D shit. People are making 3D. More 3D is coming in. Like, using Moho, matter of fact. It's amazing. And I can't wait to see what else happens here in the future of fucking animation. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you. Sorry for my very shitty chroma king in the background. Uh, my green screen does not go down too far. But, I mean, it kind of works, but I am still kind of in the way. So yeah, no. Thank you for watching. I literally just noticed my window isn't fully showing, so you couldn't see the far, the far left side of my screen. I hope that doesn't ruin anything. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, goodbye. Oh yeah, and make sure your interpo interpolation. Oh yeah, and make sure your interpolation is interpolation. Oh yeah, and make sure your interpolation is set to linear instead.